2021, obviously a strong year, especially when the Fed dumps in $4 trillion of liquidity. 2022, the Fed's going the other direction. What does that mean for the market? We're gonna talk about that, get you prepared. Let's go. Hello, this is Michael Loftus for Wealth and Wisdom TV, where education is the key to a successful financial future. First time here, we do regular market updates. We've got educational videos coming up. Here's a list right here. Lots of information, live show we're launching this year, and podcasts. So please make sure you do subscribe, hit the like button, and all those other things that can help us out. Now, 2021. Obviously, a very strong year from a relative basis, okay, and an absolute basis. What does that mean? Absolute return and relative to the indexes. It was a strong year, not all sectors, but quite a few of them. But 2022 is going to pose its own challenges. Why? Because for the first time in a while, the Fed's going to start going the other direction, not only pulling out liquidity, but also going to start raising rates. We're going to talk about the impact, go through our big charts, what keeps me up at night, and most important, game plan for 2022. Let's go to the big board. All right, so first up, as always, as part of our process, that's the key, we do have a process, we start with the cycles, okay? Now, a year ago, November, we talked about moving to cycle two. Growth accelerates big time last year, and inflation accelerates. Now, of course, that was a controversial call back then. Clearly, we have seen that ad nauseum. Now, that being said, in our last video, Santa Claus Rally, yes, we did get it, we talked about now moving over here, which is gonna be cycle one, or a shallow cycle four. Really, we're looking at growth slowing, and inflation decelerates. Now, I'm not saying it's going away. We feel that it's peaked and it's gonna start slowly going down, kind of like disinflation is what we're gonna see. Now, one of the things we look at in the past is this chart right here. We talk about the US dollar, right? So as we went down in the cycles, you see the dollar go down, inflation goes up, okay? The devaluing of the dollar, which of course is gonna happen with all that printing. Down the bottom is the CRB index, commodities index, okay, which was our big call. And you can see from its low point, it was up over 100% at one point. Now, it has peaked, it's come down, okay, but we're seeing a lower high. So we anticipate this to slowly roll over again. It's not going away overnight, it's going to slowly start deteriorating CPI, PPI etc. So now let's go to the big charts. All right, going to go quick today through some of this. So a couple things. Here's your monthly view. We look at things in three different time frames, three weeks or less, three months uh, or less, and then three years or less. So obviously this trend line is very much positive as you, as you see it. You know, straight line up. Is there anything here that I see down the bottom, okay, momentum has peaked and is slowly going down. That's the only negative thing that I see presently on this chart. So next up, oh, by the way, of course that's positive. Next is your weekly chart, same thing. You know, what do I see here that concerns me? Here's your 200 day moving average. We're now 36% from that. Obviously, that's a massive move, big move, big overprice move. Same thing here, we're seeing a little bit deterioration on the overall momentum of the market. At the top here is relative strength. We peaked and then it started going down, okay? So a lower high. So that's something that we're looking at right now. And we'll talk about that when we see some of the underlying uh, parts of the market that show strength. Next is our daily. What do we see? Obviously, so we're long-term positive, mid-term still positive, short-term positive. Do we see anything short-term? Market's overbought again, okay? We keep on getting in this overbought pullback stage. At this point, they've all been buy-the-dip opportunities. 
which we did a week or so ago. Okay, they are, have been, excuse me, by the dip opportunities. We'll see going forward. Over here, you can see PPO, which is basically telling us it's overbought. We're seeing a negative crossover there, kind of a quick indicator versus MACD, although MACD is turning over as well, momentum. So short term, maybe as we head into the beginning of the year, we'll see some weakness, and then we'll see the, where the market's gonna take us. Now, underneath the hood, if you will, right, here's your company's, your 50-day moving average. Companies above your 50-day moving average, we've talked about this, right? You peaked over here in the 90s, which shows incredible strength, and obviously you can see the line going lower, okay? We're about 70%, still a lot, but it is lower. We're hitting all-time highs with less companies going above their 50-day moving average. The other thing I look, like to look at is the entire market, the NYSE, okay? We see that here underneath is new highs minus new lows, right? Same thing as the last chart. Excuse me, let me get rid of that. Over here, you can see peak big-time strength and now you look at the last week, we've got a lot of negatives. You see that down here, but we had 89 new highs versus new lows. Not showing a lot of strength. That is something that definitely has me concerned as we go forward. Next up, we're gonna talk about sector spotlight because we've seen some definitive changes in this area. Let's go. All right, first up, 10-year treasury. This is one of the areas. Going back to cycle two, we were out of treasuries, all right? Treasury yields go up, prices go down. Good move not to be in treasury. Kind of bodes well with our not believing in your traditional 60-40. Again, have a video coming up on that. Make sure you subscribe. But same thing here, right? We feel that we have peaked. Let me get rid of that, right? We've peaked. We're starting to see some lower highs, okay? So we started tiptoeing back into treasuries in the last couple weeks. We've been buying on dips, not fully allocated. So if you look at a 60-40 portfolio, we would have two, 3%, 5% cash. The rest in bonds, we're still about 20 to 22% of bonds right now, not fully allocated waiting for those opportunities before we do so. Now, what's happened in the market in the last month, sure, the S&P's gone up, but we have seen a definitive shift here in the markets, kind of goes along with our call, going to a shallow cycle four. So what works in those cycles? First thing up, consumer staples. You can see that, right? If yields are going down, think of interest rate sensitive sectors You've got staples done very well, definitely in an overbought situation, not fully allocated yet, same with the bonds, waiting for probably another pullback here to add to this position. Same thing goes here with utilities, right? Look at it right there, same thing. Utilities up in the last month, and I'm gonna show you a chart with that actual strength in the last month. Okay, next up, what else does well? Here's the uh, consumer discretion is another one of the asset classes we have, okay? This is one of the, we'll see, this is more of a cycle one versus a cycle four as we go forward. And then next up is home construction. Yields continue to stay low. You can see home construction continues to do well. So REITs, home construction are some areas that we are definitely into going forward. And I talked about, you know, what are we seeing here? This shift in the market, you can see it definitively with this chart right here. Hopefully, if I can get there. <laughs> okay, so here's the chart right here. This is a performance chart, not selling performance, but over here is your S&P. You've got the Qs, NASDAQ 100. Okay, then you've got uh, tech in general, energy financials. And you can see where they were in the last month. Who's all the outperformers by double? is going to be your home construction, healthcare, that's another sector we've talked about, utility, staples, and real estate. So you can see not only the shift in assets, people going in these asset classes, but look at the outperformers in the last month. Again, S&P up, no question, but these cycle four assets have definitively 
outperformed. So we're going to wrap this up real quick with game plan going forward. All right, 2022, what are we looking at? First off, we don't make predictions, know that right now. Okay, we look at the data and we make changes according to that data. We also really focus on the trend, three months or less, or three weeks or less, that determines our allocations, when we're buying, when we're selling. But for 2022, first off, we talked about cycle one or a shallow cycle four. Both of those are very favorable for equities, okay? All equities. Some of the new asset classes we talked about, we've been introducing, et cetera. So good quality companies like we talked about, big balance sheets, that'll continue to the theme in 2022 in the first quarter. Come second quarter, different ball game because at that point, we're looking at the Fed coming in. So let's talk about that real quick. First off, this is the Buffett indicator, obviously Warren Buffett, corporate equities to GDP, clearly, Big time stretched, okay? The long-term average, if we get back to those long-term averages, what do you think things are gonna look like? Okay, but what's happened is this, right? Because of all this intervention from the Fed and you say you can't fight the Fed, this is very true, okay? Right now, we show a couple things here. PE, price earnings keep, cyclically adjusted price earnings, okay? Right now, back in dot com 33, PE today, we're at a 38 cape, which is obviously extremely stretched. Now, what this shows, if we go back to being overvalued, 20, we're looking about a 33% pullback. If we go back to a 15 fair value, the long-term average, we're looking at a 40%, uh, excuse me, 49% pullback. Not saying it's gonna happen, but that tells you how overstretched we are. So. First, and the biggest theme this year is the Fed, right? We know there's gonna be three interest rate hikes, possibly four. What happens with that, okay? The impact, we know in the past that has not been favorable for markets. You also have to look at the fact we've got a mid-year election cycle, and how does that play into things? Because obviously, current government doesn't wanna see this market going down, and if we're raising rates, and if growth is going down like we anticipate, that is not a good recipe, okay? So Fed is number one big theme. Number two is the yield spread. Talked about this, 10 year minus two year determines recessions. Each of the red lines are recessions. When you invert, go below zero, that's when you see that recession coming. We saw it previously, but with the Fed intervention, of course, dumping all the money, $4 trillion, shortest recession on history of three months. So this is the top chart I'm gonna to continue to watch. We're down to 0.79 from a 1.5 just a couple months ago. So really close eye on that. Okay, transition to new cycle assets. We talked about that. Gotta be careful though. A lot of overbought signals right now. So buy on red when we see some pullbacks and have an opportunity to add to those positions. Right, some big themes, lithium continues to be that, obviously with cars, what's going on there. Infrastructure, let's see. Did a couple buys at the end of the year there, have not panned out, already sold one of them. Not seeing the push I thought we would from the infrastructure bill, but we'll follow that. Supply chain, who can benefit from supply chain getting better? A lot of different companies watch on that. As we said, watch the Fed and the yield curve. And of course, watch us, subscribe, like, we'll keep you up to date when we see these cycles change because when we go to cycle four, that will not be a good call to make, but we're gonna be prepared, we'll make those transitions. Thanks for watching, Michael Loftus, Wealth and Wisdom TV.